Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the presentation of our paper titled Deep Steel, Advan Advanced Model Extraction, Leveraging Efficient Weight Stealing in Memories. This is a work produced in collaboration between Arizona State University and University of Central Florida. My name is Adnan Shiaz Rakin, and my co-author Hafizul will present this work to you. Before going into the details of the work, let me first introduce the background information. Machine learning is extremely popular in different applications, such as robotics, medical applications, and self-driving car as well. Machine learning as a cloud service is gaining popularity in the forms of Amazon AWS AI, Google AI, and Microsoft Azure AML. In such cloud service, the vendor trains large model, which has potential IP uh, values, and lends it to the customer who can use those models with certain remote privileges. Such remote access give rise to different kinds of adversarial threat models. We broadly classify those threat models into two major categories. The first one is the model tampering attack, where the attacker actually tampers the inputs, weights, or sometimes both, popularly known as Trojan or backdoor attack. In the other class, the attacker tries to steal secret data or feature information. Our concern is the third one, which is the model extraction attack, where the attacker looks to recover model architecture or weight information. So what is the objective of a model extraction attack? In a model extraction attack, the attacker tries to create a substitute model which has similar accuracy and high fidelity as the target model. Potentially, that substitute model can be later used to attack the target victim model using adversarial samples. In a tangent line of work, remote side channel attack is also popular in cryptography application to leak certain key informations. Those attacks have also been deployed on ML models as well. In ML models, the focus of those attacks were to recover the architecture information, such as number of layers, number of connections. This gives us two real opportunities. The first one is none of the existing side channel attacks actually successfully recover the fine-grained weight information. The second one is exfiltration of weight information can potentially be even more dangerous than architecture-only recovery because that makes the attack more towards the white box. So that's why we pose two key questions in this work. First is can we recover fine-grained weight information through remote site channel? On top of that, deep learning models have millions of parameters, and those parameters can be practically impossible to recover all of them. That's why we asked the second question is, how to utilize those weight information to perform an adverse mo model extraction? From now on, I let Hafizul to take over. Thank you, Adnan, for the great introduction. Uh, before moving forward, let me first briefly discuss about our thread model and the scope of data. We assume the case where the victim is running inference is in a, using a DNN model in the same machine as the attacker. This is the typical case for remote environment where multiple tenants actually share the same physical hardware resources. We also assume the case where that the attacker knows the victim DNN model architecture. However, the attacker does not know any other information such as model parameter information. And it cannot directly query the target model for- uh, Google Fi, a phone plan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. <laughs> Now, now we discuss about our attack framework, which we called Deep Steel. Here is a brief overview of our attack framework. In a higher level, our attack has two major components. The first step is a system level exploit in which we partially recover model weight information. We call this Park Hamelik. Then based on this recovered weight, we perform mean clustering based approximation of the weights, which we aptly call mean clustering training. As a brief example, Assume the attacker's goal is to recover the weight W1 from this victim model. Initially, the attacker has no information about this weight W1. Hammerlick still uh, as many bits as possible from this weight using Hammer-based information leakage attack. Then mean clustering training is performed on the other bits to approximate the remaining bit information of this weight, and then train a substitute model based on that. So first, let's dive uh, further into the details of our Hammerlick attack. Uh, in essence, our goal in Hammerlick is to locate and recover model weights from memory. Uh, here is a brief overview of Rohammer before moving further. Uh, Rohammer has been historically used as a uh, fault injection vector, where the goal is to inject bit flips into victim data. Uh, 
This shows that uh, if you place the victim into a target row with a vulnerable cell and repeatedly access the adjacent two rows, then over time enough charge will leak from the victim cell uh, that it flips the data from zero to one or one to zero. One important property of this th that the bit flips are data dependent. Specifically, if the bits stored in the two aggressor rows are the opposite of the bits in the vulnerable cell, we see very high probability of bit flips. For other data patterns such as this, bit flips are highly unlikely. Based on these characteristics, we can potentially steal victim secrets bits instead of faulting them just by placing them into the aggressor row. Then by observing bit flips in the attacker's data in the target row, the victim data can be leaked. This changes the row hammer based attack vector from fault injection vector to data stealing vector. Prior work in Ramblit is the first one to demonstrate this exploit to steal cryptographic secret from memory. However, there are some constraint in the current form of the attack which may potentially prevent it from uh, applying it to large vic uh, victim applications such as DNN model inference. For example, uh, they require a special property in victim application uh, in memory duplication, which may not be generic enough. This poses the first challenge is how we can perform a generic row hammer based information leakage without relying on a specific victim characteristics. Furthermore, prior work only shows uh, recovery of cryptographic key up to hundreds of bits, but uh, DNN models typically uh, range from millions of parameters and uh, Applicability of this uh, type of exploit in the large scale victim models is still unknown to us. This raises our second challenge is how can we apply row hammer based information leakage to recover secrets from bulk victim application. So before moving forward, let, let me first address the first challenge and present you a generic row hammer based data stealing without relying on any specific uh, victim be application behavior. Here the victim as usual is placed in only one of the aggressor rows, and then the attacker occupies the target row and other aggressor row, and presets them using alternating data pattern. After hammering, based on the existence of bit flip, victim secrets can be leaked. This technique can be applied by observing bit flips in either direction from zero to one or one to zero. Now that we have our generic row hammering technique to steal information from benign victim application, how can we systematically recover memory information from a large victim? Initially, before the hammer leak exploit, the victim may occupy these pages in memory which might not be exploitable. Since most of these typical victim pages belonging to DNN uh, inference services are anonymous page, we cannot relocate them using deduplication as the attacker does not know the content of the page. To potentially message this page into leakable locations, we need to evict this page first from the memory. We propose to use memory swapping for this. After this stage, the attacker should occupy most of the memory while the victim pages should be swapped out to the swap space. In the second step, the attacker's goal is to systematically release pages for the victim to relocate into. Based on a pre-existing bit flip profile, the attacker first chooses potential leakable pages and then releases them in a specific order to populate a parkour structure called page salt. So page set is a last in first out structure, and these recently freed, uh, freed pages populate the page set a structure which, might, uh, which will be potentially used by the victim application later to relocate into. In the third step, the attacker's goal is to precisely allocate the victim pages to the recently freed desired locations. When the victim accesses the pages from the swap region, the operating system places them into free locations from the page set in the last in first out manner. Based on the order of the victim page access, the attacker can precisely locate them later on because he has populated the page set earlier. Finally, the attacker performs generic raw hammer based bit stealing to recover victim secrets page by page. The hammer leak technique can be applied if that, uh, the attacker can precisely release pages before the victim execution occupies a small amount of page. But how do we guarantee it for large victim applications and still keep high accuracy of relocation? We propose, uh, sorry, we propose best page release to break down the victim application access to smaller pieces. And if we can guarantee the correct allocation for each of the smaller batch, then we can guarantee the accuracy for the entire victim memory space. 
We use cache-based anchor points to monitor small parts of victim execution, and when the victim execution reaches to a specific region of interest, we release, the attacker releases page accordingly to a predeterministic manner. Using this method, we can effectively relocate large victim applications and perform bulk data stealing using the generic row hammer technique. Here is an example of how HammerLeak exploit is integrated with the PyTorch to leak DNN model weights. The attacker first sets up multiple anchor points in the PyTorch library to monitor the victim execution stages using this model. These anchors are triggered when the victim starts execution of different layers, and then within the, each layer of execution, multiple macro anchors is triggered to further divide uh, one layer in execution into several uh, smaller batches. Based on which anchors are triggered, the attacker releases predeterministic number of vulnerable pages for the weights to locate and non-vulnerable pages for the other data such as input and uh, feature maps to locate into. This way, the attacker can place all the victim weight pages in de desired location and then steal weight bits afterwards. With that, I now request my colleague to go into the details of our training algorithm. Yeah, now that we have this powerful attack to leak the victim's secret weight information, the next challenge we have is how to utilize this partial information. The solution that we propose is a training algorithm to utilize this partial information and train a substitute model. Basically, intuitively, you could understand if you take the weight WT and leak its most significant bit, you could project the range of the, of the weight of WT. In this way, if we leak farther bits, starting from the MSP, you could even project the range of WT even narrower range. And by leaking more and more bits, we could project the range of WT into a more narrow range. In this way, after hammer leak attack, we will have a projected range for all the weights. Using that projected range, we could compute a projected mean for all the weights. Using that mean, we basically apply a mean clustering training penalty during the algorithm. You could see the purpose of that clustering penalty algorithm is to make sure all the weights converge near the mean of the projected range. So for mean clustering training, we could have three possible scenarios. For weight set one, we recovered all the eight bits. We just do not apply any training for that weight set one. For weight set two, we have partial bit recover starting from MSB, we apply the clustering training. For weight set three, there was no bits recovered, so we train them in a traditional cross entropy fashion. For experimental setup, we basically perform the experiment on popular vision data sets. For evolution metrics, we report the accuracy of the substitute model and also report the fidelity of the uh, substitute model, which basically shows how close the decision boundaries are between the substitute and target model. And we also report the adversarial accuracy using the substitute model transferred to the target model. In terms of results of Hammer League, Hammer League is an extremely successful attack with 95% accuracy, and it is pretty stable uh, with a standard deviation of 0.74. Using more rounds of Hammer League, we could recover more and more weight bit information. You could look here, with 4,000 rounds of attack, we could recover almost 90% of the accuracy across all layers of the uh, ResNet 18 model. In terms of mean clustering training performance, with increasing rounds of attack, the accuracy keeps improving for the substitute model as well as the fidelity. And the adversarial attack performance moves closer towards the white box attack performance, which is quite intuitive because we recover more and more bit information with more rounds. In terms of comparison, we mainly compare with the existing remote side channel attack, which uses, uh, uh, which uses the strategy of recovering the architecture on the information. With this additional information of the weight bits, we could improve the accuracy of the substituted model by 18%. And as we already mentioned, we have more information compared to a black box case. Our attack performance is more closer to the white box performance. In summary, uh, deep steel with exploitation of a remote side channel for the first time can exploit fine grain weight information in bulk from DNN and it can recover the substitute model accuracy and fidelity up to 90%. And the adversarial samples generated by our substitute model is more closer towards the performance of a white box attack. And our proposed attack just opens a new door for practical model recovery and opens door for future defensive solutions. Uh, thank you so much. I will now take questions. Thank you, Adnan and Kafizu. Um, any questions, please come up to the mic. Yeah, and uh, yeah, just introduce yourself as well. Oh, you're 
Sen yine bak. Wait, someone else to ask first, but anyway. Uh, Murat Kantarcı oluyor University of Texas at Dallas. My question is that if the model is run also using some part of with GPU, so do you assume it's only CPU-based model, or if you run with a GPU, what would be the result look like? Uh, so we assume that the inference is done in uh, in the CPU because uh, we assume that the attacker sets up cache anchoring points to monitor the execution using CPU. Uh, but in future, we may actually try to extend our attack to feature uh, like a uh, support GPU-based inference as well because the weight information will actually be stored in the main memory of the system regardless of its running into the CPU or GPU. Uh, a follow-up, if, if the model is run using SGX and encrypted, is this attack still applicable? Yeah, so that's a good question. So uh, for SGX, the data is stored in memory or encrypted, so if, even if we can steal our uh, bit information from the weight in case of SGX enclaves, uh, the data will not be the actual data of weights, but uh, we want to note that running an, an, a large DNN model in uh, like a SGX enclave is still not very practical because of the high amount of uh, overhead of uh, execution that has been demonstrated in the prior, uh, prior works. Thank you, any other questions? Okay. Uh, while you're coming, uh, I, I just was wondering, because when I think of bit flips, I think of integrity violations, right? So when you were running, did you by accident modify the models and like just, yeah, then come up with So, uh, okay, that's another excellent question. So here we want to note that we are actually inducing bit flips into the attacker's control data. So when we induce bit flip into attacker's data, it's highly unlikely that it's going to cause any, any system freeze or unlikely event of like a system crash because the data uh, that's changed is attacker. So we, we just uh, uh, compare the data with the preset data that we set before and then move on. So uh, typically it doesn't cause, uh, lead to any system crashes. Thank you. Uh, yep, please introduce uh, yourself. Hello, I'm Gustav Goswami from UC Davis. Uh, first of all, thank you for your amazing talk. I really like the idea that uh, bit flips that happen due to row hammer is data dependent, like whether if you have a one or zero has an impact on whether you're able to flip the bit or not. So here, my question is, uh, did you consider the true and anti cell distribution in the DIM? Because the capacitor might like be full charge but may represent a zero, an anti cell, or vice versa for a true cell. So did you consider this during your evaluation? Yeah, of course. Uh, so this is a, another excellent question. So what we essentially did was during the memory templating phase, we already we, we tried to generate the bit flip profile, which tells us uh, which loc a specific location, if it's vulnerable from zero to one flip or one to zero flip. Uh, so regardless of which uh, direction it's vulnerable, we can precise the attacker's data, uh, we can preset the attacker's data to either zero or one and observe for either bit flip or no bit flip. So either case, the attacks works very successfully. Okay, a quick follow-up question on that. So this distribution of anti and true cells depends on the DIM or the manufacturer that you use. So uh, if uh, we use your uh, attacking model, does it mean that we have to profile this true and anti cell distribution every time before performing the attack? Uh, uh, so no, uh, what we basically have to do is before any type of hammer leak attack, we actually perform the memory templating once to determine which are the flippable locations and the direction of the flip. Then, and then the entire existence of the uh, inference attack, this remains uh, constant as long as we don't reboot the system. Okay, okay, thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. Um, yeah, okay, um, I think we have just one quick question. So you're revealing the model weights, and I was wondering if, what about the actual data point, right, that goes through, can you? Uh, reveal anything about that? Oh, yeah, basically, we also uh, in these experiments, we is assume that we have 8% training data available. So we also perform the experiment by varying the uh, range of training data available up to 2%, and with less and less data available, the attack becomes less effective. That's okay. quite expected, actually. Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, let's thank uh, both of our presenters uh, once more. <laughs>